because it's something that like, you know, I'm trying to piece through and like very few people have like the tolerance to like talk about it because they hear it at first and it's like, oh, I know that there's a totalistic truth, you know, and then they just like cut you off, right? So I appreciate the discourse. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm open to all of discourse. I think it's, it's a good thing, good stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I'll talk to you later. All right, see ya. The chat's been like blowing up. I haven't read any of this. What are people's? We're, we're mainly just fucking around. <laughs> Meta modernism. <laughs> I could tell that that guy was very perturbed by the idea of non-universal truth. Um, but I think everyone is a little bit. Like I was too when I first heard this. And I'm still, just, I still just, am. Just be sure, uh, the dude that was just on camera, that was not host Mark, right? Does anybody know? Yeah, it was not okay. host Mark. Yeah, he... he uh, I don't know what form it exactly takes, but he prescribes to, I think, some sort of Christian philosophy. So, well, I could definitely tell that, but that's, I mean, it's the thing is that like you have to like look through the allegory and stuff, and then there's you have to find like the common language, you know, and and it's it takes a while and several conversations to get to that point. So, yeah, I like because that picture too. I'm, I'm saving that picture. What picture? A good one. He uh, posted it in chat down there. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like what I was saying yesterday. Like how gravity could have easily been formulated as a pushing force rather than a pulling force, right? It's like kind of arbitrary. Um. <laughs> See, I'm not necessarily great with the sciencey stuff, so I'm not like, yeah, totally. I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I like to, I like to hang out in the realm of either what is directly observable, as in more like a sensing sort of way, or I like to play around in the realm of what if. But as far as I think more like a TE oriented logical fact. I'm like, eh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. It's yeah. uh, so we talk about sort of trying to whittle something down to its bare minimum, but you're trying to adopt a system where you can't break it down any further. Mentioning something like that. So is it sort of like a like what was sort of like? Do you, is your goal to try to have a holistic sense of things, or? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I kind of feel like I do, but I haven't. You know, I haven't been able to translate it into the world of objects so that anyone else can understand. Is it like? Means. Is it like a logical <laughs> parsing? Like you're just trying to pin down the different. I'm I'm trying to use I'm or? trying to use my TI to like pin down the symbolic understanding that I have from like NI. You, uh, I, I'm gonna try. Yeah. Which one? Sorry. Oh, INTP. Okay. But the thing is that, like, I've in the last few years, I, I've, you know, I've always kind of had this like NI hanging in the background that like I never really acknowledged. You Do know. You socionics at all? Uh no. No. I, May want but, to. Oh, sorry, that's my computer. Uh, I apologize for that. It's just going to be annoying. Is that a fan or something in your computer? Uh, yeah, it's an off kilter fan. I got to oh. it out or something. <laughs> Unfortunately, that requires like sensory maintenance, which I'm not the best at. So, I mean, I could absolutely leave right now and go fix that, um, but I'm not. <laughs> so there's that. So let's just tell. 
tell them about demonstrative NI and INTPs. Okay, so basically for like socionics, there's, there's this idea that you, you know, you have your preferred functions, which would be sort of like the same order as yeah. an MBTI for the functions you prefer. However, in socionics, certain definitions are slightly changed or there's different components, you know, that's like, for example, an MBTI SI is more focused on sort of sensory memory, whereas in, I mean, an MBTI, it's more focused on sensory memory, but then in socionics, it's, there's another aspect, which is like physical comfort. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even necessarily physical comfort, but how you relate as a physical body to your surrounding. So it's in some ways more engaged. Um, right. It seems anyways, like in, in Myers-Briggs, that's all tied up in introversion and extroversion, kind of like, uh -huh. it's like, how do you relate to the outside world or the internal world? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, you no, know, as far as socionics goes, uh, at least a Model A, I can't really speak about the other models. I know a bit about Model G, and then there's Model B stuff, but I'm really more concerned with Model A currently. Um, Model A in Socionics sort of has this idea that uh, in some way or another, you are, you know, you have some sort of grasp where you're trying to utilize. Sorry, someone's knocking my door out to stop for a second. Okay, so <clears throat> anyways, um, you know, in some form or another, you're utilizing all, you know, eight different forms of right. functions. Sure, that, that's always seemed to be the case to me anyway, you know. Like, right. But it's just that some of them you're just like, you know, you don't mm -hmm. want to really use them all the time <laughs> as much. Um, so... Basically, the thing is that the way it has it ordered, the strongest and most preferred function for, say, an INTP would be TI, but then probably the second most utilized and sort of intimately known function would be NI, except it would be, in Model A at least, gets considered as primarily a nonverbal unconscious function or what's con gets considered as vital you know they consider unconscious versus unconscious so they reword it as mental versus vital he's saying he doesn't really buy into it um right, as i said this is this is more according to model a but uh basically you were talking about the ni stuff and i guess what i'm trying to drive at is that there's at least one model that sort of identifies for intps that ni would be up right. there with ti in terms of um, as I said, sort of psychological. Right. Well, I have to say, about. it's a little bit interesting that once I started flexing and I a bit more, and, and I had like also this like really strong, like secular, um, logical positivist like education, you know, in, in like chemistry and physics and math and like this kind of thing, that like as I started to flex and I, like suddenly things like, you know, you know, all these like meaningful coincidences, right? These like synchronicities and stuff, which is like really bizarre for me, but like seem, seems to be a form of truth in and of itself, you know? Um, these kind of like, you know, sim symbolic coincidences that have meaning to you, you know, and potentially like other people, and they like actually make a difference in the real world because of that perceived meaning. You know, it's like in the realm of like placebo, placebos and like manifestation and like occultism and like all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's it's all under that NI kind of. I, I almost feel like the more, like I'm not sure what type Young was if I had to guess. I'm talking about Carl Young, by the way. Um, yeah. well, and he used that term a lot, right? Synchronicity. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the example he gave was like how he had this like logical positivist that was like he was always having you know one of his patients you know and he could never break through uh, her like you know what we would call TI like her her rigid kind of like you know organizational structure of like the universe and uh, 
or, or like logic system, you know, and she was like talking about this dream that she had about like a, you know, like some beetle or something. And that like uh, yeah. a beetle and then like a beetle flew into the window or whatever. And he opened yeah. it up, grabbed the beetle and handed it to her. And he finally like broke through because of that, like meaningful coincidence, you know, right. Um, <laughs> like that. Ah, yes. It's a picture of a man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, was it? He he almost strikes me more as an INTP, I'd say. Um, just because from what I've seen, the the more sort of not necessarily occult variety, but some of the more sh more shadowy aspects of NI. And whatnot, it like the the it's it's the more like an thing. INTP sort of thing. What were you gonna like, say? Oh, I was gonna say it's like it's like these hidden this intuition that you can never bring into like it's very very difficult to bring into the conscious mind, but but definitely like leaks its way in in terms of like how I perceive the world. You know, um, it's like especially now that I've been using that way of thinking more and more. And I've started to acknowledge that, you know, some of those symbolic relationships more than, you know, I kind of, I don't know. Like it's, it's weird. What, what did you mean about like how it's like it, an INTP thing rather? Like how does it differ from other people's? Use well, I mean, like, cause uh, I've known, uh, like Ian, uh, FPs and stuff and stuff and like INFPs that like seem to have like more of that I guess like I don't know um. yeah um, I don't know it, it seems like it just comes off more differently uh, well like I, I've struggled to sort of figure out my type for a while I mean I've pretty much identified primarily as INFJ myself but uh, I've still had times where I'm like, am I really sure that's my type? Just because when it comes to NI, I struggle to, um, you know, really nail down in conversation, like, what it is. Like, I can use terms with TI, like, talk about it in terms of, like, you know, winning relative certainty or, like, you know, relative consistency or stuff like that. I can talk about it as, you know, more systematic or something or like more formal logic. But then when it comes to NI, it's like, I find myself like sort of at a loss sometimes. Um, uh, yeah. It's very much like this started to come like undone for me, like a bit when I, you know, reading about like hermeticism and stuff, because they're all very much, right. It's all about the symbolic relationships, you know, and, um, how those relate to the greater concepts of like how the universe like uh, works and stuff like that. Um, and, and so it seemed to match up well with like in like kind of things that I'd already intuited about like the structure of things, but it was like, it was like, it was like shorthand. It's like, it's like a way like symbols are like th these symbolic representations are like really powerful because you can contain so much information like it, it's like a it's like having a zip file in my brain you know like to like th there's like a utility aspect of like ni that, that that i can kind of have these like packages of entire concepts and thoughts that i can now like surmise with like a single symbol instead of having to just like remember in totality like an entire logic system you know it's like, it's like, it's like I can, I can push stuff into the subconscious and then recall it with a symbol and like use my subconscious, like with my conscious mind. It's like, yeah. it's like a way to communicate with the subconscious mind that I didn't have before. And that's why I'm like so interested in pursuing it further. Yeah. Um, I actually got involved with a Facebook group a while back that in the dealings with Enneagram and instincts and whatnot, they try to utilize like artistic or musical collages just to try to see if 
like there's any sort of discernible pattern or like, you know, unconscious information people are sort of compiling together. Um, you know, just like when assembling pictures together and whatnot, because you sort of have like personal preferences, like oh, I like this, I don't like that, you know, just sort of organizing things in that way. Um, but I, uh, I've definitely noticed a, a break or a sort of, there's like a noticeable difference when I feel like I'm trying to force what I consciously consider to be NI as compared to when I'm dealing with something else. Right. I don't know if I would call it NI or whatnot, yeah, th but it's this like... Is the, this is the problem. Like, I can't use it very properly if, I, if I'm using, like, TI actively, right? Like, it, uh -huh. it, it kind of... It, it crystallizes things. It makes things too precise and, like, rigid that, like, NI can't function. So I kind of almost have to like make myself like, you know, you know, see the space between the spaces, you know, kind of like just, you know, yeah. relax, relax the, the, the one one thing cerebral that, control. One and, thing that, oh, sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, that's basically I had to say is relax the cerebral like control and the, and the analytical kind of like mind, I have to quiet it in order to access an eye uh, yeah. reliably. Yeah. So, um, ah, fuck, what was I going to say? Um, I sort of had the thought a while back that in order for intuition to really work, and maybe the extroverted intuitors don't struggle with this as much, but as far as introverted introverted intuition goes i feel like to really sort of oh shit. In. hold on well, i left an energy drink in the freezer and it's gonna blow up unless i go grab it hold on he sounds like me putting putting things into the freezer and being like fuck I could definitely be wrong about the INTP thing. It's just I, I felt like he had a grasp on the particulars a bit better than a lot of the. Well, I can't really compare it to the average INFJs or whatnot because, I mean, you get like Young who appears very concerned with figuring out the particulars of things, and then you get some other INFJs that are like, "I'm telling you, man, the JFK assassination. Fucking look at this." Right, but he he didn't start writing anything until he was like forty. True. True. Man, this actually worked out really nice. It's like I'm drinking it. I got it just in time. It's like a slushy in here. <laughs> <laughs> Not it normally gets fucked up for me, but maybe I'm just bad with the timing. But um, no, the uh, the thing I was trying to say is that as far as the introverted intuition goes, I feel like to really tap into it to where I feel like I'm catching a glimpse of it, uh, I can't really be engaging or if I am, it has to be more like an autopilot sort of thing. Like, I, And what I mean by that is like, I feel like to really engage the intuition por portions, like the intuition is they're the, the feelers, they're the things that are going bump in the night. They're like the feelers that are put out trying to search for something, you know, like search around in the muck or whatnot. Yeah, Just, and I, I mean that by, you know. It's, it's, but it's like, it's not, it's not this active thing. It's like it, within the subconscious though, it's like this, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I, that's why I sort of think of it as like you can't look at it directly. It's like I sort of tried to draw this parallel with. I feel right. like you, you got to like hold up a mirror and then like I, I see feel a like, projection of it. You know, <laughs> I feel like I. I mean, do you, do you buy into the notion that functions work on an axis at all? Like with another function, like FE is on an oh, axis so with like, TI. It's like. Um, so you like you using one or the other, you know, kind of. Yeah, like, I, I guess like I know more, more is like a Jungian duality sort of thing. Like oh, the okay. extroverted sensing function would be a like dual version of NI. Okay, it's, it's like so extroverted it's like, sensing. It's like what, yeah, an aspect of the same kind of realm, uh, just like. Uh, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. I almost consider it as... Sides like, of the same coin kind of thing. Um, like both are cycling through asking and answering a question. Okay. Oh, the okay. Way, 
the way I sort of see it is like extroverted sensing would be trying to take in the mundane aspects of sort of physical existence um, and sort of taking those snapshots and whatnot or just having that, you know, that under, no? I don't, I don't know. For me, for me, like, I have a really hard time describing the sense and stuff, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I want to. I want to hear his his uh, what thoughts if, and some shaking his head. What ab- What about like seeing it as like objective observation of? Oh God! I, I just again. I just want to hear his opinion because he's, he's he's doing a peanut gallery, and I'm like, tell me, I want to know. <laughs> I'm, um, not, I'm not that te adverse. I do like to learn about it. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to, like, essentially it sounds like you're trying to understand it through extroverted sense in, in yourself, which I would see it more as, like, you could understand it through an eye. So it's, like, it's a subjective thing where it's, like, so I don't know. But I there's, like, different impressions. Impressions is the word that I like to use. So it's not necessarily... Impressions. That almost sounds, like, more like... MBTI SI. That's what I, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? I was trying to talk about SE. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that uh, I'm saying that I NI see. works on an axis with X with SE. Yeah, totally. You're just experiencing the sensory realm, but then I feel like the NI aspects is like I've said this before, and it's basically just poetic gobbledygook. It doesn't even necessarily mean anything other than something personal to me. Um, but uh, what what are you rubbing your thumbs for? What is that? No, this is snaps. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, too long. I, I sort of like see it as the extroverted sensing is like seeing reality, or I mean, physical aspects of reality and whatnot, of what's going on. But then the sort of other side to that is seeing what's basically seeing what's not seen. It's like seeing what's the invisible aspects of it or whatnot. And I've related it before. And what I mentioned as the sort of poetic gobbledygook is uh, sort of trying to peer behind the veil and see God is what I've labeled it as, which sounds, you know, as I said. So Zach, remember yesterday out. when I was talking about like lifting the veil and like that, uh, yep. <laughs> that's, that's like um, finally when like, you usually it's, it's like an eye involved i feel and then you kind of there's this moment where everything clicks and suddenly like your subconscious understands the concept and it's communicated that to your conscious and you know that you understand it that's like the moment that the veil is list, lifted you've like, seen this before without ever necessarily having to have seen it yeah and and then it's just finally now though you've been able to reconcile it all and, and, and represent it symbolically. And, and like, I don't know. What's that? Uh, I, I, I hijack Bible verses every now and again, even though I don't necessarily understand the context of them, but <laughs> through a mirror darkly is what, what I like to quote for that one. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase, but um, now uh, it's something like now we, we see through a mirror darkly, but then we will see face to face or something like that. Hmm. I feel like that's a sort of NI relating. <laughs> Fucking that dude. <laughs> it's really funny when you get people reading Revelation. Ah, uh, goddamn it, more knocking. That definitely that will like wake up your NI. Sorry, what were you saying, G? Oh. I was just wondering what that sound was. Oh, that's his computer fan. It's it's off like off off weight or something. Hmm. I know it's annoying. <laughs> you read the book of you seriously read that five times a day? <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> say, Holy shit, man! What kind of OCD are you into? <laughs> it's like, how do you have time for anything else? <laughs> I'd be like. See? So much crazier. They could not read that. <laughs> See, look, look at that. Look at that right there. See, according to Socionics, the ENTJ should be apparently fed up with INFJs and be, should be trying to tell me how to order my life and live and stuff like that. Because <laughs> this guy, he's like, he just, he just likes listening to us talk. 
This guy's I, thought, an ESTJ? I thought that was sort of funny with the uh, conflictor relationships because apparently ESTJs are supposed to be INFJs conflictors, and it's like I know one, and I'm like, we get along pretty well. Although I could definitely tell I wouldn't want her as my boss, but <laughs> yeah, who's ENTJ? Uh, ENTJ, uh, this hombre right here. Oh hi. hi. Oh, he's the ENTP. Never mind. ENTP. Hi ENTP. Nice. Oh, I thought he was saying he was ENTJ earlier, but he was. I think you were asking if I was ENTJ. Oh no. No, because he was like, "What type?" And then he typed in immediately ENTJ. What? Mm. what? See, my experience with ENTJs is that we connect on on a level like conversation can flow sometimes, and then other times, like they spend a lot of time trying to fix me or like tell me, telling me I'm selfish for, for wanting to have some sort of impact on the world or like want to know where everything is going and why it is. And like, they were like snap out of it. Why are you contemplating all this stuff? It's really annoying. Well, never mind that. Apparently they're, they still suck ass. I yeah, prefer they're like, than, I prefer then they're the, like, then they're like, oh, I just want to hear, I want to hear, you know, what you have to say. Like, you're always so quiet. You're always listening to me talk, and then you don't really have much input, you know. And then it's like, you say something, and then they're like, oh, you fucking selfish for thinking that. You know, it's not always like that, but. Yeah, it depends. Like, they're morally judgy, or they think that you just contemplate a lot of things that don't matter contemplate too much. I, I'd prefer that instead of trying to fix me, they just like leave me the Coldplay album that has the song Fix You on it. <laughs> yeah. But our sense of humor is going to be kind of similar in a way. Just... That's the thing is it's like you could be like, oh, they're an ENTJ so we're not going to get along. It's like, well, if they're a functioning human being and they have a decent amount of self-respect, then good chance you might get along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Here in a few minutes, I think you guys might be able to witness a very rare thing indeed. I think um, I'm going to clean my room. So. Oh dear um, lord. That's, uh, <laughs> don't do that. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> I need to. It's a fucking mess. Like I'm saying that as as someone that you know is okay with like a messy room, you know. Organize your life, organize your mind. Exactly. Like the the disorganization of, of my room reflects the disorganization of my <laughs> mind. Mm-hmm. You should just throw everything away. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to switch over to, so I could hear you guys, I'd have to switch over to my speakers and my webcam mic. But if I did that, I'm afraid that they get like feedback or something, so I just have to get off. So say it. Oh. We, we were having a conversation. We I know. No, look, look, you <laughs> fucking traitor! You're gonna go clean your room instead of discovering secrets. Of your room. <sighs> well, I want to do both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clean your room really fast and then come back. Oh God, it's not gonna be fast. Oh Jesus. Here, let me you try. And, can... let, here, let me try and see if I can if I hook it up where I could like hear you guys while, while I was doing it and then chime just, in. Just be across the room. I'll say something very ni like, and then yeah, like so... little John, you'll just respond back like, "Who what?" <laughs> and then I'll be like, I'll I'll explain myself again. And you'll be like, "Hey, yeah." All right, let me let me try and uh, do this. Let's see. Casual over here tapping into that uh, that polarizing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try, <it now. laughs> Try to get somebody to leave. No one fucking wants you. Really. How does how's the quality on that? Oh, okay. okay. Oh, <laughs> Bye. How, what's, what's the quality of the audio like? For well, me? we can hear you more clearly, and now I know for certain I want to hear you less. No, he's lying. He's yeah, lying. no, it's fine. No are, are, is there like noise from my computer or anything like no. that? No. Okay. But why, why should it matter? I mean, I, I got basically what sounds okay. Like well, a, I'm gonna turn on my speakers now, and I'm gonna see if there's feedback. Okay, I'm gonna have to like do some shit. We wait patiently to find out. He's like, there might be feedback. 
There might, there might I be. I haven't seen that Is version there... of the supervision explanation. I don't think casual. I've only read the one on. No, there's not really feedback. It's a bit harder to hear. So as I said, you have to be like, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. Am I blowing out your? Are people gonna hear me? Yeah, it was just a little loud. That's all. Well, I was impersonating little John, so I think really it was accurate. Yeah. <clears throat> He did mute himself just so he knows. So if he goes to yell, then we won't be able to hear him. He laughs like just like my cousin with Asperger's. What a kind thing to say. No, I mean it's a coincidence, but like <clears throat> they have like the same mouth. So then it's a work. when I look at him, it's like her mouth is like coming out of his <laughs> Damn, mouth. Damn girl, you cute. You got that ass focus mouth. Speaking of ass. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, that's not a funny joke. Uh, I was saying ass burgers. It is not ass burgers. Well, I just saw that guy's ass. So that's why I said, speaking of ass, I mean, you did say ass, but you said ass burgers. Uh, I am? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> She's like, looks like Mama's got a reason to stay home tonight. She starts cracking up the vodka. I, you know, I thought about going to get a bottle of wine and just getting drunk today. Yeah, I'm just so fucking that. bored with this frame of mind. What kind of is that? Is that vodka? What is that? Nice. What was that? Vodka. Eantipi. Is that your Eantipi juice? <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to talk like that. Are you on YouTube? You look familiar. Yeah, you. He's Matt no. Marco. He's on YouTube right now. Here, talking with famous people, uploaded in one-hour segments to the Talking with Famous People Raw channel. Doesn't he kind of look untrustworthy for some reason? Neptune, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious. Looking at him, I just can't trust him. I don't know what it is. Let's work through this. I want to know. It- no, you need he, to talk in like a Russian I accent now. Like, I look at Zach and I, and I want to you. put trust in him, which may or may not be a good thing. Neptune, are you trusting of anyone? Okay, like, no, but also <laughs> like, <laughs> particularly <laughs> not. <laughs> you hurt by that. I know, you're like, too. man, come on. He he kind of he kind of looks like a uh, like a long lost relative of Zach Zachatek. I was just thinking that. Kind of like Zach Zachatek, but then also that dude from uh, I think it was the first episode of Firefly, the guy that was like they were doing the job for or something like that. I'll I'll try to find a clip. I have no idea what show that is. Someone said something yesterday that was. I'm gonna try and find it. Um... I'm not gonna be able to find it. Yes, you are. I believe in you. Okay. I'll try and find it. I don't remember the show name. Let your what intuition person? guide you. I'm kidding. Uh, um, that will show. No, no, no. Hmm. All right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna go through my history. I have to go through his history. I gotta wade through the sea of goat porn. <laughs> it's all goat porn. Well, not all of it, Jesus. Ken I don't know what you guys are talking about. He looks half projecting. Indian, half Mexican. He looks primarily European to me. Yeah. I say this because I'm one of those. Uh, I'm one of those, you know, pretty much, you know, European descended people that. Is that a clarinet? Is it a clarinet? What? What was? That? This is what I got uh, yesterday. It was. It was a hard brass octopus dildo. Mm. Oh yeah, see that guy doesn't he's not trustworthy either. 
he's looks so mischievous. Oh yeah, yeah you do that. look that guy. There's a little bit of Tarantino in there too. Maybe. Uh, a bit more Tarantino in that guy than you I'd say, but that dude, he looks like he, he could be related. Yeah. <laughs> Neptune, are you scared? I don't know. It's like a <clears throat> I feel like he's harboring a lot of thoughts behind his face all the time. So th- this is one thing I wanted to touch on because yeah. it's like it's like supposedly with INFJs they're supposed to be just these psychic. Fi- oh, right now he's lighting fire. That's, you know, yeah, real yeah. trustworthy. Um, no, but uh, apparently like INFJs and whatnot are supposed to be like psychic. That was one thing maybe consider that it wasn't my type. And when I say psychic, I, I don't mean like you know magically. Um, but uh no yeah, it's just like neptune with the like I, I think this person's like that or maybe they're like this or whatnot it's like i hear a lot of hear a lot of stories of infjs being like oh don't trust that person or this thing's about to happen or that thing and i'm usually the one walking around like i don't know what the fuck's going on i guess that would mean that you have like a healthier and i i guess maybe maybe just an ni that's not prone to just assuming paranoia i feel like i'm i'm probably more likely over time i can build up a paranoia but it's more like thinking oriented i feel like as far as like paranoia versus mania goes i feel like i'm more likely to be manic I mean, I'm actually, like, half kidding, I guess, when I talk about how untrustworthy he looks. But he definitely has one of those faces, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. See, Neptune. I I just like to say, Neptune's fucking untrustworthy. He comes on here and tries to divide people. Look at that. Are you going to tell me that hat is not trustworthy? (laughs) I made this magic trick. That was from the girl that he had over last night that he m- murdered and put under his floorboard. Oh, I made this hat. <laughs> okay, yeah. Honestly, if he had murdered the girl, that would have made him more trustworthy than that he's made it. He's made the hat. You can't fucking trust that. <laughs> you made that? Did you knit it? Nope. Your grandma made that. Oh, crochet. He made it from the flesh of his enemies. You taught you how to crochet. Do you have a girlfriend? Do you guys crochet together? No, I just learned. Why? He's an ENTP. Chances are oh, he's a polymath. Right. Why? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> well, because I was in the singing growing up, and it was a, it was a, there's an overlap there, surprisingly. Hmm. <laughs> Carolyn Smooth Street. You want to get married? What are you, 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 you got a girlfriend or something? Like, is she there <laughs> right now? <laughs> uh, hey, you know. Go get that wine, she. It's going to be a long night. I'm a nosy What can I say? I'm waiting for drunk she to get on here one night. Just be like, just be in the comments telling people, turn around. Let's, let's see the back of you. Come on, do it. Do a spin around. Do full can't walk. I think I was on here drunk one time. That was it. I was on here drunk one time, and I was acting a fool. Hmm. You were on here drunk right. like 30 times? I, I vacuumed <laughs> Nick's kitchen, and there was a part of the vacuum I didn't need, and I threw it into the sink. And the thing, the thing that confused me is when I went back, I couldn't find the vacuum or the, uh, or the part. So it's like somebody else must have moved it, because I definitely did not lose consciousness. Yeah, they probably put it up so you quite uh, stop looking like such a weirdo. Eh, that's like. Old meme. Stale meme. It's not gold. That's stale meme, bro.
I made one more video. So I like how that video comes along and then it's like it summoned Loki. Just the just the uh I have arrived at the peasants. Yeah. I can make any sort of vaguely yeah. racist comment. You make any sort of vaguely racist comment and Loki's like, I've been summoned. <laughs> See how Loki, did you take my advice? Are you MF or two? Huh? <laughs> what advice? What advice? Well, I mentioned a I mentioned getting a voice modifier last week when I was talking to MF or two, and then now you're showing up with one. Well, believe it or not, the world actually doesn't only surround surround around you. Uh, I've had I've had a voice changer for years. I'm going to start referring to you as Balls Drop Loki, because your balls finally drop. No. Oh. Are you sure? No. Oh. oh. But what's wrong? Well, I can't seem to hit the low key. Oh. Anybody, anybody seen the... Uh, oh. anybody, no, anybody ever seen that, uh, that Oni and G video? Oh, no, I'll find it. How many videos do you guys watch of random shit a day? I don't count. Dude, I don't count. <laughs> I usually only watch like MBTI and Socionics. Well, no, there's really not good Socionics content on there. Yeah, it's interesting. Hey, I'm posting this, but please don't do the watch all thing. Just because Eric said to be. Oh, somebody did it. Pony I just cartoons, said yay. don't do that. Yeah, like they're gonna Thor, listen. father says he wants you to go do Who the dishes the right it? now. Loki. So I'd go do them if Loki. I were Loki is stroke. What are you doing? I'm hey. playing a song for it you, was brother. Carolyn. It's your birthday She's such a today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Carolyn not doing a very good an job. Asshole. I know, it's just that uh, <laughs> I can't quite seem my, to hit the low. My NI is leading me to Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime somebody makes those NI comments, I swear my ulcers get bigger. I fucking hate that. <laughs> well, Loki, let's sing some karaoke. Uh, like my NI no. took me. Like Afterwards, we can do the do hokey pokey. No. Like productive. How like about I shove the handle of my hammer up your annuals? I like how Carolyn's that's actually justifying herself. She's like, no, it wasn't me. I got a call. See you guys later. Thank God. Bye. You want to come back to my place and check out my eye? It's internal. It's <laughs> oh. like, he's like a a creature from the underworld or something. He just like look. Yeah, I feel like he's uh, probably shit breath neckbeard. I think it's probably what he is. Hmm. Hmm. It's like, thanks, man. Thanks for broadcasting that to everyone around. Children. Sautéed. I gotta restart my app because it froze. Teriyaki children. Yep. Uh, uh. The uh, the seven wing six variety of ENTP is a interesting flavor. It's compared to the seven wing eight. Seven yeah. wing eight. There's more. There's more manic arm flapping. I think I yeah, they're, the they're like aggressive and they're jockeying for position all the time. Uh, you ever seen turkeys in the wild? Yeah, yeah. It's like, kill the alpha male. One of the betas run up and starts flogging them. Like, yeah, that was fucking me. Yeah, I just have this reverse thing where I try and be, like, the most beta. 
Well, if we're talking Sociana's quadras, then that'd be the opposite. But I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, okay, I see. I, I hear the pun. It's, it's whatever. Do you hate Sociana's? <laughs> Not really. I just don't. Socionic shot a dog. I don't understand the parts of it that I don't like. So I can't like not like the whole thing because there's certain parts of it that I do like. Mm-hmm. It's hard to learn though because it's so frustrating because a lot of it's so dumb. <clears throat> I mean like yeah, I kind of like take a lot of like key points that I've learned from it and then a lot of other stuff I kind of just dismiss honestly. But it could be that I haven't like, researched it enough. I think it's cool that it's like an actual field of study in Eastern Europe. Oh, really? Yeah, there's like over 800 doctoral theses about socionics. Which is like, damn. Like, that's that's great and all, but then it kind of makes me think about, I don't know how narcissistic it is to get obsessed with one's identity and exploration of identity and all that. Not if you're doing it, it explain be... people. What happened? Not if you're doing it to explain people, other people. Yeah, that's true. And I think as far as, I guess, starting point, I think it could be equally as narcissistic to avoid that because you're mm-hmm. also trying to preserve something. I, I can understand if somebody has gone through a process. It doesn't have to be sociologics, but I'm saying if they've gone through a process of seeking understanding, if they come to a conclusion or somewhere along the path, they decide that identity is not necessary. I'd prefer that they arrive at that from understanding and not out of fear of just having their mind changed on something. Mm -hmm. And I'm guilty of that as well, which is why uh, why I assume it's a problem for other people. What, what you doing there? What you, what you... Oh, dear. Dude, that goes in your ear. I'm trying to put that in your mouth. I'm trying to catch it. So I like how he just ignores what I say in favor of saying, I'm trying to catch it. It's a test I give to everybody to see if they can be a porn star for my shoot. Try to try to catch this rapidly moving object. If you can't do it, sorry, don't make the cut. So I thought it was interesting. I was watching a video earlier where uh, Carl Jung had mentioned sort of a brief breakdown of uh, not really so much a breakdown, just brief descriptions of the. Um, sort of his sort of four functional, I don't even know if he related to him as functions, but uh, sort of four concepts of understanding things. And he uh, he mentioned like sensing is being concerned about that there is something and then thinking is relatively concerned with trying to find out what is it. Feeling is relatively concerned with whether or not it's agreeable. Uh-huh. And then he sort of drew out his explanation of intuition because he was like, you know, it's, it's a bit foggy or trying to pinpoint that. Yeah. I, I just remembered my, my reason for really thinking he's INFJ is has to do with my theory of like inferior functions being what's true for people. He's always arguing about how like, there's like symbols and archetypes and that's how that's like the ultimate truth. And it's like, dude, no. So like, what would yours be? What would uh, your argument for ultimate truth? It's just uh, whatever. That yeah. sounds like some ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like whatever, man. Why can't we just hang out and like eat some pie? Exactly. I mean, if you've ever met ENTPs, it's always that. Like, if you try and get to what they actually believe, it's like, yeah, what, whatever. Even Hume's like, like, here's all this philosophy, 
be a philosopher, but be still a man. Whatever. I don't know. It's like all this fightiness ultimately to get to this root of I'm really just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe for INFJs it's like the opposite way. All this like, yeah, I'm not really sure about this or that or this. You know, I'm just I'm trying to figure out this and then you get down to the extroverted sensing and it's like we must conquer. And it's like Jesus Christ. I see, uh, one thing I thought was surprising is I see uh, Frederick Nietzsche get typed as INFJ now. Yeah. So I know it's sort of figured INTJ, but. Yeah. I mean, I just don't, I just assume he's T. Really. Yeah. Well, I most, most of those typing online are shit. That was, um,. Was it uh, that World Socionic Society group on Facebook primarily were the ones saying he was IEI? How do you guys, did you guys like, because he's like a philosopher, right? Or some shit. He was a dude that wrote some books, yelled at a horse and died. <laughs> now, okay, how do you guys get into like reading about all these people? Is it school that that gets it started for you, or or is it like something you just? May I may, I may I go first? Um, yeah. So basically, I went to school, I learned some stuff, then I got involved with some friends, mm -hmm. and some friends argued about some stuff. And one time, when arguing, somebody brought up something about it. Well, if you had read this philosopher, then you would have known what I'm talking about. So then, eventually, maybe I'm on a YouTube video or something. I see a YouTube comment. Fucking people never read their Plato. Then finally go check out something like that. So basically, it's just like rabbit holes. And then eventually you find that the more and more you interact with people that are arguing about stuff, particularly when it comes to philosophy, is they constantly have to quote someone else or be like, well, you would just understand if you had read this. And then eventually you learn about some people because people keep citing philosophers as though it's a trump card. Just like, and now I play my Plato card. Okay. That's, that's a good explanation. Yeah, that's about right. And uh, I can say for me, I never like, I, I kind of like go down rabbit holes on like Wikipedia pages and stuff and like learn about subjects for their ideas first and foremost. And it's like through osmosis, you figure out the people that are like involved. That's kind of like my process. Like I don't, I don't go for the, like the people aren't as important to me primarily. It's the ideas. But then you kind of just like by association, you learn about the people. Okay. It's more like it's more like thinking about something and then having someone tell you, oh, that's what Nietzsche said. Or that's what this guy said. Oh, yeah, there's there's so many times I've had discussions with like philosophy students and stuff and they're like quoting all these philosophers and stuff and I was like, Can you just like paraphrase the idea real quick? You know? <laughs> and and they're like uh, no, and I'll be talking about something that's like, oh, you've been reading so-and-so, and I'm like, no, I just kind of, you know, like, accumulated other information and used my intuition and then, like, you know, looked at Wikipedia articles and stuff and, like, read, yeah. you know. So, right. Yeah. I just read, I just did read them a lot. <laughs> that, that, that happened uh, a while back when I made one of those shorter videos for, uh, for the Talking With Famous People channel. Mega Bro got on there. He's like, "Yeah, you're basically talking about the shadow. You're trying to face aspects of that." He's like, "Young talked about that, and he, he linked something." I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like if you want more, you can unless uh, instead of thinking about it, you can just read this. Basically, that's what it said. Mm -hmm. It's like that, that's the thing is when it comes to certain philosophers that. I'm more interested in paraphrasing the idea because like reading a lot of that stuff, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm going to be here all day. I don't even right? understand half of this. Yeah. I got a uh, book, The Essential Thomas Jefferson. Never made it, never made a dent in it because it's like, <laughs> I can't understand like that. That dude is like spitting, spitting super hot fire. And it's like, I can't follow any of it because it's like, it's like his, his English, like he lived, he fucking lived like, I don't even know how long ago, and his English is way better than mine. 
Ya. It's like I have to stop every three words and be like, okay, those three words strung together. What idea is that supposed to be conveying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, like a third of the way into the sentence. I thought you, you stopped every that. word, so we don't have to hear that fact. What was that? I said I thought you stopped every three words, so we don't have to hear that fan. No. So why do you mute yourself? Let it embrace it, man. <laughs> somebody, somebody, I mean, I was just trying to, that way it wouldn't become like grating uh, on people. But Audra did say that before. She's like, just leave it on. That way it just becomes, it's just in the background. Then I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's one it the becomes, becomes one with the universe, right? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> All right, then. If that's the consensus, then I will. I will oblige. This is. What's that? Not good at them? What? That's the map of your school. He's like, guys, <laughs> look. He's like, I have, I have a map. It's a guide. This means, it's this means guide. I have TI, right? It's a guide. Let us read, man. What look, I that? have a book. L O L O L I are such algebra. I are such I, I have I have equations in my books. Calvin and Hobbes. Oh yeah, because I can read that I can't read that. He's like, can you believe that they gave us formulas for the equations <laughs> when we were doing the reciprocals? Oh. I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Oh, hey, it's casual. Look at that. Look at this sex motherfucker. Are we book sharing now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing the NTP equivalent of Kit Kats, where she's like, and then I drew this, and then this, and then, and then this one, yeah. Bailey's. And then this other one's Bailey's, and th this one's as close as you can get to Bailey's uh, without getting your eyes wet. <laughs> I'm drinking Bailey's out of a shoe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What's that one? Uh, Mates Mate elementary, elementary logic. Uh, the portable Nietzsche. <laughs> the other Zach's <Zach's laughs> expression. It's just that's that's a bit interesting. Oh, yeah. uh, you heard of that one? Oh, you have to read the author. No, the previous one, the one that says uh, typology. I know. Never mind. What's that plus and minus it has in the donut? It's becoming interested. Now we watch the casual in its natural habitat. Very intrigued now by a plus and minus sign, as we've like seen the symbol utilized before. Does that teach you how to be a top or something? <laughs> <laughs> it teaches you how to be the best, the greatest. I'm rich! I'm the best! I'm the greatest. The Emperor's new groove. All these fucking books. I'm like, why, why don't you plebs just read articles, man? It's free. I know. Yeah, well, do you read them or do you just have them? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just have a lot of books. Yep. I got some books. I, over there. I've, read, I've read most of these, but uh, not all the way through. I have like four different Bibles in my house, and I still haven't cracked that one. I want to. I want to go to a remote cabin in the woods and read the Bible for like months, just to see what it's about. It's like one of the most important. Why do you have to be in a cabin? Okay, so here's how it goes. <laughs> if, if you have, if you have sort of like a, an embrace of like fantasy elements, and the first first few books should be like, oh, that's that's sort of entertaining. Okay, uh -huh. right, that's cool. You're gonna get to Leviticus, and then you're gonna die. That's fine. Cool. Because it's, it's okay. just going to be like, and then no, these feel... fifty. It's just basically numbers. Like it's it's a ledger. Okay. It's basically what the book is. This is just what what I want to read are the Vedas in original Sanskrit, but I'd have to learn to read Sanskrit. Sanskrit. 
<laughs> Are you looking for like a spiritual experience, uh, cabin, Zach? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 